Well, lately I've been having trouble sleeping, and it's got me thinking. Hey, good morning, chickens. We gotta get your mess cleaned up today, don't we? You're one of the new ones. I can't even remember your name. Abigail? Cinnamon? I think you're a cinnamon something. I still don't understand why you jump out of the coop every day. Why would you not want to be in there with your friends? And I'm not exactly sure why I'm not sleeping that great. Hey, baby duckies, how's it going? You guys excited? You're gonna get to play a little bit outside today and we're gonna clean up your, uh, well, mess. Hey, good morning, guys. You guys finding some good food? All right, good morning, Lucky. How come you're not playing with the others? And how come you're so dirty? You're always dirty, I don't get it. You are the dirtiest duck ever. How's that, guys? Is that a lot better than being stuck inside the barn? Getting to play outside with the chickens? Yeah. One of the things, though, that it's got me thinking about is when I was a kid and bedtime stories. One thing that I absolutely loved as a kid, my dad every night telling me stories about growing up on the farm. I just love those stories. How you doing this morning, sir? You taking command of the coop? You look like you're doing a pretty good job so far. I can tell you this, your crow's starting to come along quite a bit better. <laughs> hey buddy, good morning. Good to see ya. You know, the one thing about having a small farm is, uh, is if you can become way more efficient. And that's the thing that Sarah and I, I think, have worked on the most this year is becoming way more efficient in everything that we do. If you can have efficiency, you can not only save yourself a lot of time, but you can also save yourself a lot of money. One thing that we do is we take all of the compost that is in the duck coop, and when that kind of gets all wet from them drinking water and all that, and uh, gets down and becomes uh, basically uh, a big mess, we take all that compost and we take that outside and put it in the chicken run and spread it out. From there, we uh, let the chickens basically, they'll play on it and, and uh, root through it and find any goodies in there and uh, also add in their own compost and they'll do that all winter long. Come next spring, we'll take that compost, we'll spread it out where, uh, where the corn's growing and uh, let the chickens go out there and pick through it a little bit more and uh, basically scrape that all up uh, after a month or two, put it into our planter boxes and uh, it's pretty fertile soil. It's pretty impressive how, uh, how good that soil is once it's been gone through with the chickens and the ducks for about a year. There was always one story that I always loved having him tell, and it was when he was a kid, they used to go out in the barn and have a basketball hoop up in the barn loft, and, and um, they'd go up there and shoot hoops in the winter time and, and a lot of the times the, the ball wouldn't even be able to have any air in it because it was so cold outside. But uh, this one side of the barn, uh, there was kind of like a, like a lean-to or, or a, a wing that went off of one side of the barn and inevitably the ball would roll over to that side of the barn and for whatever reason that side of the barn was a lot more rotten than the rest of it. And one of them would have to try and climb out there onto that ledge and get the ball back without uh, without falling down through the hayloft. You know, and not everything is easy on a farm. You know, especially when it's, hey, who dumped an egg out there? Whose egg is that? Is that your egg? I know it's not your egg, you can't make eggs. Here you go guys, have some fresh grass. I think probably in the last week and a half, I think we've probably had about five inches of rain. And what that's done is that started to really help my uh, pond project that I've been working on. Yeah, this grass is starting to come in pretty nice. Here's another project I gotta get working on. I gotta get this fence taken down. I wanna get this whole area opened up. So the main reason I wanna take this fence down is this fence goes about 50 feet over to the property line. And when the big giant pile of dirt gets the heck out of here, the one thing that that's gonna do for us is it's gonna make it so that from the house, we're gonna be able to have all this land going out towards the pond area and it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. So Sarah and I talked, we'll get the fence out of here and uh, move it. Actually, we're not moving the fence out of here. We're gonna move the fence back a little bit and uh, it'll open up all this and have a beautiful view all the way out there. 
Well, I'm getting some of the fence sections taken down, but something's got me just a little bit worried. While I was working right over here, all I could hear was bumblebees. And now that I'm looking real good, I'm actually starting to see some of them flying around. I don't know if this is like a little bumblebee headquarters or what this is, but I think I'm gonna go get the tractor. Well, this here, this is uh, my 1949 Ford 8N tractor. Get the gas turned on here. And uh, the nice thing about these tractors is the parts availability. You can just about buy anything you want that's uh, for these tractors, even though it's as old as it is. Well, I sure worked on it a lot last winter. Let's see if she'll fire up. Purring like a kitten. Well, while I'm here working on the farm, Sarah and the kids decided to go cliff jumping. Today we're out at the St. Cloud Rock Quarry. I doubt they're having as much fun as I am. Well, I think the plan is going to be a two-part plan. One of them is tie them chains around there, and the other is lift it up and see what happens. Well, that didn't go all that bad. I figured this one post was going to break no matter what I did. I noticed it was pretty rotten when I was pulling the nails out. Well, that's looking quite a bit better. I'm pretty anxious to get this giant dirt pile out of here. It's going to really make things a lot easier. Plus, we got quite a few projects that we want to get going here on before winter. And a lot of that has to do with getting rid of that dirt pile. So hopefully we can stop the rain for a few days and make that happen. But, but this grass is starting to come in. I think by next weekend, this whole area will be green. That looks like a pretty good place to take a nap. You know, and spending every night listening to those stories from my dad talking about my uncles, you know, falling asleep basically to a dream farm. I think that's probably what led me to the moment of wanting to live that lifestyle myself, or as close as I could anyways. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see our channel grow, don't forget to hit the like button, share. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Tell your friends and family. We appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a nice day.